to my channel. My name is Alicia and I make sewing tutorials and DIY fashion videos. So today I'm going to be trying something new. So recently I got a pattern that was on the discount rack and it was only three dollars. I don't have a lot of experience with patterns. I've done so far only two with patterns. I made this blue ruffly top and I also made these pair of pants and honestly my luck with patterns have not been good so far I always needed to make adjustments to the pattern for it to fit me well so hopefully this one won't be too much of a hassle patterns are supposed to make your life easier but <laughs> I just like making my own pattern just like I made this dress and I find also like if you make your own pattern you kind of already have all the instructions to follow in your head but this one you have to read everything and I don't know, just patterns are not really my thing, but it's going to be a little challenge for today. So this pattern actually has like multiple versions you can do. There's A, B, C, D, E, and I'm going to be doing the D over here. And for my fabric, I got this super adorable cotton fabric. I got like one 1.1 meters and I think it says you need like 1.3 meters so I don't know if I'll have enough fabric but that will also be an extra challenge. I guess I'll start by opening the pattern. So it comes with instructions and here is the paper pattern. Alright so I guess I'm going to start by cutting out the pattern pieces that I need then we'll get along and follow these instructions. First, I need to cut it at the proper size. I'm size 6, so I cut all of the pieces at the dotted line. Fold the fabric in half and place the pattern pieces on top. But no matter how much I tried to move the pattern pieces, I just didn't have enough fabric for everything to fit. So what I did was shorten the front and back pieces and like that, everything fit. One important thing to note is that there's an arrow on each pattern piece. It's written grain line. And what that means is that it has to be parallel to the selvage of the fabric. The selvage is basically the edge of the fabric that is more tightly woven and usually looks like this. So just make sure that all the arrows are parallel to this. Next, I pin the pattern and cut out the fabric pieces. If you have any pleats on the pattern, cut it out so that it's easier to transfer the markings onto the fabric. Also, do the same thing for any darts. So I have two front and back pieces, two sleeves, and four cuffs. I only noticed after I cut everything out that I actually needed four cuff pieces, so I cut the extra two from a different fabric. I also have two front and back facings, two straps, and four collar pieces. I also needed to cut some interfacing. What this does is make the fabric sturdier. I cut some for the cuffs, collar, and facing. Place it onto the wrong side of the fabric and iron it down to stick it to the fabric. So now all the pieces are ready to be sewn and we can start following the instruction manual. So the first thing to do is to make the front pleat and also sew in the darts. So it's pretty simple, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. For the front pleats, I just folded the fabric so that the markings are touching and pinned it like this. And sew it down. And for the back darts, I folded the fabric in half and pinned it at the dart marking. Sew it down and leave enough thread on both ends to secure the ends with a knot. Here are the front pleats and the back darts. I went through the instructions and nowhere it says how much the seam allowance is. However, there are these like little circles on the pattern, like over here. And I think that means that's how big the seam allowance is. But like, that's pretty big. And I also, just to make sure, I checked onto their official site of the pattern maker, like how much their seam allowance is, and they said it's 5 8 of an inch, which is like a little bit bigger than like half an inch. I usually just make mine a quarter of an inch, and like the reason why I don't like these big seam allowances is that I can't use my presser foot as like a guide to sew, 
and it also means that I have to trim the seam allowance after which just adds like a lot of steps but today we're following a pattern so I guess I'll just have to do those extra steps so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to trace the seam allowance onto my fabric and like that I'll have a guide to follow when I sew next on the instructions is to sew the two back pieces together and that will create a full back piece next I place the two front pieces right sides together to the back pieces sew the side seam and shoulder seam Moving on to the straps, I folded them right sides together, pinned it at the 5 8 of an inch seam allowance line, and sewed it. And now I can turn them to the right side. And to do this, I just use a stick to flip the fabric. Give them a quick iron, and here are the straps. For the facing, I just placed each piece right sides together and pinned the ends. And when every piece is connected, it should look something like this. For the collar, I placed the two pieces right sides together and sewed the outer edge, leaving one side open. Repeat for the second collar. Cut off each end of the collar and flip it inside out. Use something pointy like some scissors to unfold the corners. Iron it down and the collar is done. I've already ran into a couple technical difficulties. First of all, in the instructions, it says to sew on the straps first, and then the collar, and then the facing. And when I pinned it in that order onto the top, I realized that that would mean that the strap would be under the collar, which just doesn't make sense. <laughs> so I redid it with the strap on top of the collar, and then that worked a lot well. But then, if I try the top on, it doesn't even have enough fabric to close in the front. Like, look at this. Like, there's supposed to be a button placket, so it's supposed to overlap in the front, but it does not have enough fabric to do that. So I'm kind of stuck on how to proceed with this because there's not even enough fabric. <laughs> I did re-sew the sides in the back with a smaller seam allowance like that I was able to have a bit of extra fabric even at that there's not enough fabric to make the button placket so this is why I don't like patterns somehow there's always a fitting issue I have no idea why this is a size 6 and I like vary between size 4 and 6 so if anything this should be a bit bigger on me but no so yeah, I'm just going to ditch the instructions because those aren't helping at all. So I have two options. Either instead of making a button pocket, I make this like, instead of buttonholes, you put little loops on one of the sides like that it doesn't need to overlap. Or what I can do is use the facing as a button placket instead. Like that I could use this as a sort of extension to make the button placket. I don't know, I'll try and like pin things and I'll see what I decide with. So I cut the facing where it starts to curve and this will be used for the new button placket. Because I can't use the back facing anymore, I cut multiple one inch wide pieces of fabric to use as bias tape. Cut the edges at an angle like this Place it right sides together, and sew to create one long strip of fabric. Other adjustments I made is shorten the collar, and also add a top stitch at the edge of the collar, and for the straps. Now I can start assembling the parts. First, I pin down the collar and sew that down. And it should look something like this. Next, I pinned the straps and sewed it. And once you flip it over, it'll look like this. And now to finish off the edges with some bias tape. I pinned it all around the collar right sides together, just like this. I sewed it in at a quarter of an inch. Put the collar out of the way and fold the edges of the bias tape inside to hide the raw edges. Sew it down with a straight stitch.
and here's the completed collar. Next, I hem the bottom edge with a rolled hem. Just fold the edges in twice, pin it, and sew. Now moving on to the button placket. First, I place the right side of the button placket to the inside of the shirt. Sew it down with a straight stitch. Second, I fold it in half, tucking in the raw edges and sewed it down. Also, don't forget to fold the top and bottom raw edges inside before sewing. Repeat for the other side and here's the button placket. Okay, so here's the top so far. I'm really happy with the changes that I made. And now the only thing left to do is the sleeves. So in the original design, the cuffs have like buttons and all that and I've been working on this top for too long now, so I'm going to make it a lot more simpler and just skip the buttons and just do like a normal cuff. Fold the sleeve in half and sew it closed. Repeat for the second sleeve as well. For the cuffs, I folded them in half and sewed the side. Flip the interface cuff piece and place it inside the second cuff so that they are right sides together. And sew the edge down. And then flip the cuff to the inside like this and the cuff is complete. The sleeve ended up being a bit too big, so I cut the armhole to be a bit bigger. And now I can insert the sleeve into the armhole. Make sure to add multiple pins and sew. After trying it on, the sleeves were too long, so I shortened those as well. To ruffle the end of the sleeve, I sewed a basting stitch and pulled on one of the threads to gather the fabric. Gather it until it fits the cuff. With the sleeve inside out, place the cuff inside, align the raw edges, and sew it. And here's the finished cuff. Next, I sewed on the button holes like this. And then I hand sewed the buttons on the other side. And that's it! Here's the final transformation. So, first of all, this doesn't look as bad, but the one thing that is bothering me is these little flaps over here. Like, I think I'll have to like pinch in fabric here so that it can lay flat and probably also take in the straps and make them a bit closer because now they're pretty far out. I'm gonna go on ahead and make the little adjustments and then I'll show you guys the final product. So here's how it turned out. It looks a lot better than before. I also made a matching mask. And yeah, I'm happy that I was able to fix the collar because that was really the focal point of this top. And that's the number one thing I really wanted to keep in this design. So yeah, everything turned out well in the end. However, I did have to go through a lot to come to this final design. Let's just um, revisit all the problems that I went to. So first of all, the front was too small, so I had to add my own button placket. I had to change the seam allowance on the side and the back because it was too tight. I also had to remove some fabric from the sleeves and the armhole because that was too big. I had to fix the collar and I also remade the straps to make them a little longer. So a lot of work came into this top and honestly, I just don't like patterns. It never worked well for me. I don't know why. If you guys have any like tricks or notice things that I did wrong in this pattern, make sure to let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful. And I also made a TikTok on this transformation. So make sure to go follow me there as well. That will be really helpful. And also subscribe to my channel for more DIY fashion videos. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!